Police are interrogating a man for murder in an interrogation room. Vincent explains what happened. A man named Luke enters a loft room in NYC. As he enters the room, he sees the woman lying face down on the bed, dead. According to him, his wife was skiing with the kids while he was away from the loft, and Luke called him and told him to hurry up. He notices Luke and then the body as soon as he enters. Since only five keys exist, someone had to have gotten with one of the keys since the windows were sealed and the door locked. The police know Vincent, four other men, shared the loft for sex with their mistresses. Chris now enters the loft. Then Marty comes in. However, they do not know who she is. There is a flashback to a building opening party when all five men ignore their wives and talk about the women there. Chris starts talking to an attractive blonde woman named Ann Morris. Chris is a psychologist, and it appears that she treated her sister's mood disorder. They are celebrating Vincent's project and he brings his friends up to the loft to share it with them. In the present day, Luke begins to freak out as he tries to contact Phil, the fifth man. There's a Latin message on the wall that says fate will unite us. However, the word tense is incorrect, which Chris informs the police about. Then they ask him where his half-brother Philip is. In the loft, Philip arrives. Everyone accuses him of the crime, but no one will admit guilt. Answer the fucking question, did you do this? Of course not. Philip gets married to Vicky Fry. As a wedding gift, Vincent gives Chris the key, and he also gives him the other four keys, but Chris doesn't want it. While Marty is feeling a little nervous in front of the women at the wedding, he continues to talk about them regardless of the fact that their wives are there. In response to Marty's comment about Philip's sister, Zoe, Philip threatens Marty, and sees Chris and talks privately. Do you want maybe get a cup of coffee? Someplace quiet? Vincent is approached by Chris and asked to borrow his key just once. In the loft, they must ensure that none of them have lost their keys. Everyone has their own, except Chris, who only says he doesn't have his. But he doesn't seem to have lost it either. It's flashback time. Chris is having a dinner party for the guys and their wives. It appears that he and his wife Allison are not getting along very well at the moment. Marty, who is drunk, begins to make rude remarks to Chris's wife. He then begins to talk about the loft in more detail. A kick causes him to fall over and stop talking, but the women are thinking now. In the bathroom, Luke and his wife Ellie catch Philip doing cocaine in front of them. Luke assures her that he won't want anyone else in the loft. They are trying to determine what to do and how to remove the body because she is handcuffed. We cut to Chris and Anne having sex in the loft. She is very upset when he tells her he loves her and that he is going to leave his wife. In response, she tells him that she is a prostitute. Marty is being interrogated. His wife caught him cheating with someone he met in San Diego on business. Flashback to the business trip, Vincent, Marty, and Luke meet Dana. They turn her away because she's not thin. They also meet Hiram Fry, Philip's father-in-law with another woman. There is a business proposition he would like to discuss with them. A Latin phrase about being discreet is said to them by him. It is also Anne who is there with Joel Kotlin, the friend of Hiram's. While Chris is at home, his wife Allison catches him trying to call Anne. A beautiful blonde friend named Sarah shows up at the bar as Vincent and Marty are talking to Dana. Vincent tells the cop he met her for the first time. They go up to the roof with Luke too. After Vincent strips naked, Sarah pushes him into the pool before getting naked herself. In the pool, they are talking seductively and kissing seductively while Luke watches them. As Luke walks away, he discovers Marty having sex with Dana. Vincent and Sarah appear to have been having an affair for quite some time in the loft. In love with him, she doesn't want to say goodbye, but he wants to end things. During their present day at the loft, Vincent is about to tell the guys that he was there the day before when the phone rings. The person who called is a realtor who has an appointment with a woman named Sarah and is coming to the loft because someone listed it for sale. Vincent tells Luke and Marty. Marty can't remember her since he was drunk. In an attempt to find out if they recognize the realtor, they run out onto the balcony and then confront Vincent. According to him, he broke up with her the night before but was not involved in the murder. In the past, Chris followed Anne into a store and confronted her. The fact that she's a prostitute doesn't matter to him. The key is given to her by him. She leaves and gets in the car with Hiram Fry's friend Joey Kotlin. Luke admits meeting Sarah in interrogation. Assuming that he is homosexual, they ask him if he is jealous of the women, but he says no. Vincent is being accused of selling them out by the cops. Philip picks up the knife that was left on the bed and it ends up in Vincent's hands. Now they are all arguing and fighting, and they end up attacking each other. The flashback starts when Marty shows up at the loft one night and bangs on the door, crying to Vincent that Dana has told his wife everything and she is walking out on him. 
Vincent is asked to tell her that he loves her and that Dana is lying to her. There is a flashback of Philip in the loft with a prostitute who is handcuffed to the bed while he is in the loft. Chris and Vincent show up and help the girl. He tries to pay her off so she won't go to the cops but she leaves. Marty and Luke are new to this story. Then Luke confesses that he had been recording every encounter they had. He is then accused of being gay again, even though he has never cheated on his wife in the loft. Since Vincent didn't tell them he was coming, he didn't record them. Immediately, Luke asks him what he thinks will happen if everyone discovers the truth. Let's cut to a fundraiser the night before. As Vincent tells his wife, he will not be able to go on a ski trip with her. As Allison accuses Chris nonstop, he asks if she is the one who is seeing someone else. During a small group meeting with Hiram and his wife and Joel and his wife, Vincent threatens not to say anything about San Diego. Marty's wife confronts him and talks about his cheating and implies that maybe she's already done it. There is also a conflict between Philip and his wife. Chris follows Anne into the bathroom after she texts him and tells him to follow her to the bathroom. Chris is approached by Joel who says that his friend is playing with fire. In their discussion of Anne, it is revealed that Anne was paid for the first time to sleep with Chris. In an attempt to retrieve Zoe, Philip engages in a brutal fistfight with a man who was with her. Hiram tells Philip to stay away from his daughter and never see him again. Sarah sees Zoe crying to Vincent. Sarah is told by him that she is just the sister of a friend. She tells him she can assist him in making the decision as she walks towards his wife. But Luke bumps into her and tells her not to do it. Back to present day. It was there that morning that they saw Sarah, who had taken pills to kill herself. Luke had found her that way, and that's how he found out about her. All the videos showed Vincent sleeping with Anne, Marty's wife Mimi, and Philip's sister Zoe. When he slept with Mimi, it was the night Marty pleaded with him to go see her, and that is what she was implying to him at the fundraiser. Right after the wedding, he began sleeping with Zoe, and he was the first man she slept with. And to share the loft with them, he paid Anne to sleep with Chris the first time. The four men agree to frame him if he admits he was there that night. They've got two hours to set up alibis. Snorting cocaine, Philip slits Sarah's wrist and cuts her open with images of himself and his sister flashing in his head. After forcing pills down Vincent's throat and making him drunk, they threw him naked on the bed and handcuffed him and Sarah together. Vincent tells the cops the story, but they don't believe him because they destroyed all the evidence. To keep questioning the other four, he tries to convince them. Philip was given an alibi by Fry so he wouldn't get caught, since he didn't want to be caught having his own affair. In the midst of letting Chris go, the cop stops to ask him why Vincent is accusing all of them at the same time. She asks him if he thinks Vincent is trying to hide the murder. He thought it was suicide, but the wrist wasn't cut and the sleeping pills didn't kill her, and they didn't find a suicide note. Luke shows up at the loft while Chris is there. Chris asks Luke when he stole the suicide note. Luke put the loft on the market, and Chris found out. Luke's handwriting was on the note that Chris found in the dumpster. The whole time, Luke was in love with Sarah. After the fundraiser, he asked her to give him a chance but she told him she didn't feel anything for him and his wife saw that. As soon as Vincent left, he went into Sarah's room and drugged her. In order to kill her, he injected her with insulin. It has now been revealed that she was actually alive until Philip cut her and that she died only as a result of Philip's actions. When Chris tells Luke that Vincent has been charged with murder, Luke reminds him that it was his brother who killed her, not Vincent. After Luke went after Chris with a knife, he got out onto the balcony and began to attack him. Luke, you don't need... Give it to me. As they hear sirens, Chris tells him he has already called the cops. Luke tells Chris that he is sorry, and then he falls backwards off the balcony. Luke! Luke! Six months later, Marty and his wife Mimi back together. Vincent lives alone in the loft while Philip's awaiting trial. Chris was in the parking lot and was about to go home, accidentally met Anne and Anne invited him to have a coffee together. Uh, do you want to grab a cup of coffee? Or... The movie end. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.